which I said I was going to stop saying and I haven't. Thanks for putting up with me. <laughs> Hello my loves and thank you for joining me, it's Kirsten and today we're doing a video that I haven't done in like over a year and that is some anticipated releases. I really want to focus on reading a few more newer releases mixed in with the backlist books that I also read. These are some anticipated releases I've got my eye on for January and February. I will be doing these videos bi-monthly. Yeah I'm excited, I feel like I haven't been reading loads of new releases in a little while and this just makes me so excited for reading and all the things that are coming out. Hopefully you'll spot a few things on here that you didn't know were coming out or that you're equally excited for. Let me know in the comments below but let's get into this. I have my trusty list. So on the 10th of January we actually have quite a few coming out. So we've got four books coming out on the 10th of January. The first one is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. This is a book I'm so excited about. I saw it actually on TikTok first. Someone was I think they had an arc of it and it looked absolutely stunning and then they read the synopsis and oh my gosh I am there for it I want it okay so the synopsis I'm just going to give a brief one because I don't like going to books knowing loads about them but this one really did excite me so it says Cambridge professor Emily Wilde is good at many things she is the foremost expert on the study of fairies she is a genius scholar with a meticulous researcher who is writing the world's first encyclopedia of fairy lore but but Emily Wilde is not good at people. She could never make small talk at a party or even get invited to one. And she prefers the company of her books, her dog, Shadow, and the fair folk to the other people. So when she arrives at the village, Emily has no intention of befriending the gruff townsfolk, nor does she care to spend time with another new arrival. Her dashing and insufferably handsome academic rival, Wendell, who manages to charm the townsfolk and get in the middle of Emily's research and utterly confound and frustrate her. It just sounds so lovely. I'm really excited. I have to admit, I'm mainly excited because of how much I loved A Natural History of Dragons, which is a memoir by Lady Trent, which is written by Marie Brennan, and I love that because she was putting together basically an encyclopedia all about dragons, and this time we have an encyclopedia about fairies. Cannot wait for it. Okay, the next one is Hellbent by Leah Bardugo. This is the second book in the Ninth House series, which is her first adult fantasy series. I would actually say it's adult fantasy bordering on horror rather than just a pure fantasy. It's so good. I really, really enjoyed Ninth House. I was really dubious going into it because I haven't been a fan of her white a books but this was so good so in ninth house we're following alex and alex is someone that can see ghosts and she gets recruited into this prestigious school to basically keep an eye on all the secret societies that's within this school to make sure they're not doing things that they shouldn't be ghosts and things don't escape and basically there's a lot of like uh, rituals and things which she now needs to keep an eye on and she is not happy with any of this especially because she's had to put up with being able to see ghosts her whole life and she was never given any help or guidance. It's been really quite harrowing for her, she's had to go through some really tough times and then she finds out there's this whole school of people that are messing around with these types of things and she's fuming at them but alongside this you also have her mentor who was teaching her about all of the different societies, her role, what is going to be in the school but he has then gone missing so you have these two different timelines of when she first arrived, the present day of when he's gone missing, you have the mystery surrounding all of that. It's really good, really dark, and Hellbent is going to be the next book continuing on from that. I'm very, very excited. This one I'm going to be getting in ebook because I have Night House in paperback and I mean if you've been on this channel for a while we know that I get really frustrated at the fact that all the books come out in hardback only at first and you have to wait such a long time for paperbacks to come out and that's the main reason why I haven't been keeping up with all the new releases is because I don't have that space for hardbacks and I don't particularly like having hardbacks like I will make a few exceptions but that's it so now with actually getting into reading a bit more through ebooks I can actually stay up to date with all the new things that are coming out so that's what I'm planning to do for Hellbent I am genuinely very excited okay also on the 10th of January we have Lost in the Moment and Found by Shauna Maguire and this is 
the eighth book in the Wayward Children series. It's a portal fantasy series that I absolutely adore and we start off with Every Heart a Doorway. All the odd books, so one, three, five, they all continue on from the events in Every Heart a Doorway and then two, four, six, they are all prequels. So this one I believe should be a prequel if we're following that where it's looking into the characters that you meet in Every Heart a Doorway, seeing their backstory. I really like this, it's really fun, they're all novellas, they're all under about 200 pages and they're all portal fantasies exploring these different worlds where children were able to go into and just find places that they were accepted. I'm not going to be doing too much on the synopsis of this one because it is the eighth book in a series but it's brilliant. It's the only Sean Maguire books I've actually read. I do need to read more by them but I, I love this series so much. If you like portal fantasy stories then do give this one a try. I think it's really good especially in Every Heart Door where you have a bit of a murder mystery going on. There are horror elements to each of the books and not everything is what it's seems. It's, it's a good time. I really enjoy it. Okay and then the last one that I'm looking forward to on the 10th January, there are as always loads and loads of books are coming out but these are my, I think we've got eight books. They're my top, oh no we have five books coming out on the 10th January um, but these are my top eight books that I'm really excited about. So let me know in the comments below if there's missed any or if you think I should be, excuse me, who should be looking at this book as well. Let me know in the comments below. So as I said there's actually two more books coming out on the 10th of January. One of them is The City of Nightmares by Rebecca Schaffer and this one is one I'm a little bit more hesitant on but I'm also intrigued. Okay so it says on Goodreads the lighting isn't the best today it's almost four o'clock and the sun goes down at pretty much four o'clock so we're gonna try and do this fast. Okay so the synopsis according to Goodreads is Gotham meets Strange the Dreamer in this thrilling young adult fantasy about a cowardly girl who finds herself at the center of a criminal syndicate conspiracy in a city where crooked politicians and sinister cults reign and dreaming means waking up as your worst nightmare. I have to admit it was the tagline Gotham meets Strange the Dreamer because I loved Strange the Dreamer by Lenny Taylor. It's a fantastic fantasy book. I am also hesitant because it is more of an urban fantasy. It's going to be YA and Am I going to enjoy it as much? I'm not sure. I think this is another book that I'm going to see if I can get on ebook and just give it a try. But it does go on to say, ever since her sister became a man-eating spider and slaughtered her way through the town, 19-year-old Ness has been terrified of some other nightmare murdering her and terrified of ending up like her sister. That's also why I'm a bit like, really? We're turning into spiders? So I guess we're going to see. I haven't obviously heard anyone talking about it. Curious enough to give it a try and to see whether I like it and just see how those elements are going to play together with Strange Dreamer. I feel like they're only mentioning Strange Dreamer because of the dream parts of this and not actually to do with the writing but I'm intrigued enough to give it a try. Let me know if you've heard of it and what you think or if that synopsis intrigues you at all. I'm, I'm on the fence, I'm on the fence. But another one that's coming out on the 10th is Phaedra by Laura Shepperson and this this one is a Greek mythology retelling which is obviously why I'm interested in it because I love my Greek myth retellings. This one is a feminist retelling of Phaedra and her unyielding quest for justice and it does say it's perfect for fans of Madeleine Miller and Natalie Haynes. Phaedra has been cast to the side all of her life, daughter of an adulteress, sister of a monster and now unwilling bride to the much older power hungry Theseus. Young, naive and idealistic she has accepted her lot in life, resigned to existing under the sinister weight of Theseus's control and the constant watchful eye of her handsome stepson Hippolytus. Phaedra is actually really interesting because in Ariadne by Jennifer Saint we learn about Ariadne who is sister to the Minotaur. Ariadne's sister is Phaedra. That is the storyline that we're following so I'm really intrigued to actually read a story all about Phaedra and seeing it from that perspective because I saw it from Ariadne's perspective. Theseus is the person that slew the Minotaur and then left Ariadne behind on an island and then took her sister to marry. Honestly Ariadne is a really good book I would highly recommend. So it's going to be really interesting to see this now from Phaedra's perspective and that's something I really love doing with my Greek myths is having the same story told from loads of different perspectives and seeing how different authors do it. I'm really really intrigued by this one. I'm not sure if Phaedra is going to be part of a bigger short story collection by this author or not but I do know that Phaedra itself is being released on the 10th of January. Okay then on the 19th of January we have God Killer by Hannah Kenner. This one intrigued me because of the cover. Am I that person? 
yes yes I am um, and then I read the synopsis and that again it sounds really interesting looking forward to giving it a try clearly because it's in this video but this on the synopsis of Goodreads it says Kissen kills gods for a living and she enjoys it that is until she finds a god she cannot kill the god of white lies who is connected to a little noble girl on the run elagast fought in the god war and helped purge the city of thousands of shrines before laying down his sword a mysterious request from the king sends him racing back to the city he destroyed on the way he meets a god killer a little girl and a littler god who cannot find out about his quest i really am intrigued i and the cover is absolutely stunning. I want to give this one a try. It sounds really interesting. I've been getting back into my fantasy and I don't know, I feel like this one has potential for something that I will enjoy. So fingers crossed it works out well. From that, I reckon there's probably going to be some sort of romance interest between Kissen and Elagust, but we will see. I haven't read anything by Hannah. Can oh, no, this is her first book. So this is her debut book, which I haven't been reading many debut authors, so I'm excited to give this one a try as well. I really need to think of something else other than excited to say, because clearly I am, because it's why it's on this video. Moving on. I then have two books that I've listed for the 28th of February. I didn't find loads coming out in February. Again, that could just be because I didn't do a massive, like, in-depth look at all of this. So again, if you have any books that are going to be coming out that you're excited about or anticipating, let me know. But the first one is My Dear Henry, a Jekyll and Hyde remix, and that's by Kaylin Bayron. Obviously, it said a Jekyll and Hyde remix. That was it. That got it on this list. I do love a retelling of classic stories. I'm always intrigued, especially retellings of things like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Dr. Moreau, Island, Dracula, Frank... You know, the classic horrors, that's what I enjoy. This one is a gothic YA retelling. We're in London, 1885, so already winning with the setting. Gabriel Utterson, a 17-year-old law clerk, has returned to London for the first time since his life and that of his dearest friend, Henry Jekyll, was derailed by a scandal that led to his and Henry's expulsion from the London Medical School. Whispers about the true nature of Gabriel and Henry's relationship have followed the boys for two years and now Gabriel has a chance to start again. But Gabriel doesn't want to move on, not without Henry. His friend has become distant and cold since the disastrous events of the prior spring, and now his letters have stopped altogether. Oh, okay. It's actually saying later. It's actually saying the 7th of March. Maybe it got moved, or where I looked had it wrong? I'm not sure. But it is part of the remixed series. So the remixed classic series is authors from diverse backgrounds take different literary classics from centuries past and reinterpret them through their own unique cultural lens. It is loads and loads. You've got Little Women, Robin Hood, Wuthering Heights remix, Great Gatsby, Romeo and Juliet. There is, there's a lot actually. I wonder if any of these are out. Yes, some of them have been published already. I haven't read any of them, but this is the one that really intrigues me. Okay, so according to Goodreads, this one isn't out until March, but I found another website that said it was coming out at the end of February. So I guess we'll see which one that's actually going to be, but I mean, it's a retelling of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. So of course I am very excited. I cannot wait to give this one a try, which I said I was gonna stop saying and I haven't. Thanks for putting up with me. <laughs> the last one on this list that I have, which is also coming out up, Goodreads agrees, definitely 28th of February, is Delicious Monsters by Lucille Sambury. I haven't read any of their books either, but the tagline for this was Haunting of Hill House meets Sadie in this evocative and mind-bending psychological thriller following two teen girls navigating the treacherous past of a mysterious mansion 10 years apart. And it was the whole Haunting of Hill House meets Sadie that really intrigued me. So Haunting of Hill House is a classic book that I have on my TBR and Sadie was a book that I read two years ago. I actually listened to an audiobook and it was fantastic. I really, really enjoyed it. It's a thriller book. It was really dark, difficult, but fantastic book. I would highly recommend the audiobook because it had a full cast of narrators. So this really piqued my interest. We follow in Daisy. Daisy sees dead people, something impossible to forget in bustling, ghost-packed Toronto. She usually manages to deal with her unwanted ability, but she's completely unprepared to be dumped by her boyfriend. So when her mother inherits a secluded mansion, 
in northern Ontario, where she spent her childhood summers, Daisy jumps at the chance to escape. But the house is nothing like Daisy expects, and she begins to realise that her experience with the supernatural might be no match for her mother's secrets, nor what lurks within the walls. A decade later, Brittany is desperate to get out from under the thumb of her abusive mother, a best-selling author who claims her stay at Miracle Mansion allowed her to see the error of her ways. But Brittany knows that's nothing but a sham. She decides the new season of her popular haunted web series will uncover what happened to a young black girl in the mansion 10 years prior and finally expose her mother's lies. But as she gets more wrapped up in the investigation, she'll have to decide if she can only bring one story to light, which one matters most? Daisy's or her own. It's going to be really, really interesting. It's not the sort of book I would normally pick up, but I'm really willing to give this one a try. So there we go. Those are the eight books that I have tipped the highest to be on the lookout for in the next, like, well, for January and February, apart from one of them potentially March. I guess we're going to find out. But as I've been saying throughout this video, please let me know of any books that you're really excited to get to in the next few months, if there's any that I have missed. I'm, I'm really excited to get back into this, it, to be reading some anticipated releases rather than what I've been doing, which is waiting for those releases to come out in paperback. And by that time, I'm just not as excited about them anymore. Also, I'm not being up to date with my reviews and stuff. So that's the plan going forward for 2023 is to get back onto reading some of those new anticipated releases and hopefully this video marks the start of that and we're going to continue on with it. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry about all the lighting and stuff. It is getting darker earlier and I need a ring light which I've been saying to myself for the past couple of years now but uh never mind. Thank you so much for watching and for making it this far. I am, as always, impressed. If you have made it this far, then let's put a, let's put a present emoji because these are all going to be new books and I'm very excited, obviously, as I've been saying all the time. But yes, it's like a little present of knowing what is coming and just getting excited for it. Present emoji <laughs> and thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please do give it that thumbs up, subscribe and comment to let me know that you're here. It really does make a big difference. My social media links will be linked below and I will of course catch you in the next video. Mm -hmm.